Hi guys, Darren here, Maths Guru. Welcome to another video on the financial math section of this course. Really good to see you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you can. Stop my mum having to watch. Never going to be rich, never going to be famous. And head over to Maths Guru where you can download these notes. Now there's a good idea. Stop the video, pause, go to Maths Guru, download these notes and then write all over them. Because you never know, stuff I might say you might like, oh, he didn't write that down. And you can scribble all over them, put you in your summary book or you just use them there for notes. Yes. Uh, what are we doing? We are doing, uh, well, compound interest. In previous videos, I said that we had dealt with simple interest. In fact, all the videos previously had dealt with simple interest. And I don't like simple interest. It seems like a bit of a con to me, particularly when I'm giving my money to a bank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recap what interest is, look at simple interest, then look at what makes compound interest different and better. And then we're going to look at how to calculate it, look at what it looks like on a graph and all those type of things. Yeah. All right. So what was simple interest? Interest is a money that banks give you uh, for saving with them or for charging you when they give you money. So like my mortgage is charging me and roughly speaking, I am going to have borrowed 350,000 for my house and I'll be paying back about 700,000. Yes, I know, over the course of my life, for the 25 years I'm borrowing this money, I'm gonna be paying back twice as much as I actually borrowed. No wonder I'm poor. So interest is important and it's worked. If you haven't watched videos previously, go have a watch. They're pretty good, if I do say so myself, yes? We know that for simple interest, the interest is worked out on the initial value of the loan or investment. Yes, that's not necessarily a good thing. Yes, and we can work it out by using this formula here. I is equal to PRT over 100. Now, let me tell you why that's not a great idea. If I open a bank account with $1,000 and it's 10% interest, at the end of my first year, that means I'm gonna get $100 interest. And in fact, at the end of every year, I'm going to get $100 interest. But if I open my account with $1,000 and add on $100, I'm going to end up with $1,100. I've got more in my account, which means actually, Mr. Bank Manager, I'd like more interest, please, because I'd now like interest on the interest. I'd like you to give me money on the $100 I've already earned. Yes, so actually, I don't want $1,200 at the end of the second year. I'd actually like a little bit more. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the idea of compound interest. What happens is they work out the interest at the end of each year. So you get to the end of the year, then they work out the interest, they give you another year, and so you're getting more and more and more interest as time goes on. That, to me, seems fair. Right, so... If we have a look at an example here, um, basically it just gives you an idea of, of how it's worked out. So let's say um, I've invested $200, sorry, $250 in an account. And this is where this table is a little bit confusing, all right? Sorry for me pausing, but what it says, it's basically saying here is I've opened the account with $250, yes? So this is my amount invested at the start. But this is what happens at the end of the first year. I'm going to end up with 25% interest. So again, assuming 10% growth. How do we work that out? 10% of 250 is equal to 10 divided by 100 times 250, which is 0 0.1 times 250 or 25 bucks. And there we go, there's my $25. So at the end of the year, they add those together to give me the $275. Now, with simple interest, I would just keep adding 25. I want to do that. What I'm now going to do is say, well, okay, I've now started my new year with 275 bucks, and I want 10% interest on all of that. Thank you very much. So now I've got 10% of $275, which is 0.1 times 275, which gives me $27.50. Now, if you compare that, the first year I got 25, and now I'm getting 27.50, I'm getting extra $2.50. ka -ching. thank you very much, because I'm getting interest on the interest. So there's my $27.50, I take my new opening value, add it on, $302.50, and guess what? Uh, next year, I'm gonna get interest on the $302.50, so I'm already quids in. I've got more money because I'm getting interest on the interest. Yes, now, 
there is a quicker way of working this out. If we go back to my example a moment ago, I started with 250, yes? And I actually times that by 1.1, all right? Now, when I do 250 times 1.1, what I actually get is $275. And you're gonna say, why am I multiplying by 1.1? All right, we like to think of a start amount as being 100%. If I'm then growing it by 10%, I'm going to end up with 110% of what I started with. And how do we turn a percentage into a multiplier? You divide by 100. So if I now do 110% divided by 100 gives me a 1.1 multiplier. So actually, this doesn't give me the interest, it gives me my end amount. So if I do 250 times 1.1, I get 275. And guess what? The second year, I got 10% again. But this 275 becomes my new 100%, which I'm gonna add 10% to, and again, 110%. So I'm gonna multiply that by 1.1, which gave me the 200 and, he says, hold on, uh, 30205, 302, sorry, and 50. And guess what? If I want to then get to my next year, I would do 30250 times 1.1. And actually, I could keep doing that for every single year going. Oh, hold on a moment, that seems interesting. What seems to be happening is I'm taking each year and multiplying by 1.1, by 1.1, by 1.1. Is there a shorter way of doing this? Well, maybe. So here's my calculator just taking each of my previous values and multiplying by 1.1. But what about if I can think of it in a different way, right? So we did, for my first year, we do 250 times 1.1. That gave me a figure, which I times by 1.1, which gave me another figure, which I times by 1.1. And so what I'm now saying is, if I did 250 times 1.1, there's my first year, times by another 1.1, second year, times by another 1.1, third year, times by another 1.1, fourth year, and actually, I can just keep going. And this is what I'm doing here. If you notice, at the end of the third year, I got 250 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1, which gave me the 332.75. ka -ching! Now, if you remember anything about maths, we can actually write that in a different way. Because I've got lots of things that are the same, multiplying by each other, I can actually make that 1.1 to the power of four. This one here would be 250 times 1.1, he says, to the power of three. This one here, to the power of two. And so, we've now got a shortcut, because that number four stands for the number of years. And ladies and gentlemen, that leads us to something called the compound interest formula. A stands for the final amount. P, principal. So this is building on what we've done previously. Then we get this, what looks like a disgusting bracket, but it isn't. Remember, we are doing one plus R on 100. So let's see what that means. That's one plus, if I had 10%, 10 divided by 100, we know that that is the same as 0 0.1, which gives me 1.1. Hold on a moment, huh? And that's where I got my 1.1 from. This is basically just another way of saying, let's find the multiplier for the rate of interest, but in a slightly different way. I personally don't use that. I always use it the way I've done it. And T is the time in years. So let's just compare that with what we had a moment ago. So we said our final amount in our bank was given by 250, which was my emissional amount, times, and the last one was 1.1, to the power of four, which would give me how much was in my bank at the end of the fourth year. Exactly the same. There is my principal, there is my bracket, and there is my time. So using this, we can actually work out compound interest for years and years and years. And remember, 
we can also work out the interest. So much like we had previously, where we wanted to find out the final amount was the principal plus the interest, we can now work out the interest by taking our final amount and subtracting from it our principal amount. Ooh, love, 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 love. Right, determine to the nearest dollar the amount of money accumulated after three years. If 2,000 is invested, so there's my time, there's my principal at an interest rate of 8%, there is R compounded annually. Okay, so we know my final amount is given by principal, which was, so let's write the formula, P, 1 plus R on 100 to the power of T. All right, so the principal we were given was 2,000. 1 plus the rate of interest was 8 on 100 to the power of 3. So that becomes 2,000 times 1.08 to the power of 3. And believe it or not, I'm just going to put that into my calculator. 2,000 times 1.08 to the power of 3 gives me 2519.42. And remember, because it's money, two decimal places. ka -ching. Thank you very much. Determined to the nearest dollar. Oops, need to read the question. Says to the nearest dollar. So actually, my answer is 2519. ka -ching. Thank you very much. Determine the total amount of interest. Well, the interest is the difference between that final amount and my principal amount. So therefore, my interest is going to be given by 2519 minus what was my original amount, 2000, which is $519. ka -ching. See, if we know what this formula is and we know that we're compounding, life is awesome. Determine to the nearest dollar amount of money owed after two years. If that is borrowed at an interest rate of that per annum compounding annually, again, it's exactly the same thing. So A is equal to P, 1 plus R on 100 to the power of T. Right, so my final amount is given by determining just the amount of money owed after two years. So this is owed. Basically, this is just asking how much. So yeah, final amount. So principal is 10,000. 1 plus 10 on 100 to the power of T. How many years was it? Two years. So that's 10. One, two, three. I know that becomes 1.1 squared. So 10, one, two, three, times 1.1 to the power of two, gives me one, two, one, zero, zero. There we go, so that's how much money is owed. Determine the amount of interest, same, same, same. However much my final amount is, subtract my principal amount. So my interest is gonna be one, two, one, zero, zero, and I'm going to subtract from that 10,000, which gives me $2,100. See how this interest creeps up? Now, obviously, we can use the CAS to do these type of things for me. But again, I need to be able to do my formula for it. So again, going back to the example we had a moment ago, if we had three years, $2,000 interest rate of 8% per annum, we have to give the calculator a formula in terms of time. Right? It's got to have that floaty T in it or T in it. So in this situation, we'd have A was equal to my principal, which is 2123, times by 1 plus my rate of interest, which was 8%, divided by 100 to the power of T. So when we do that, we know that my formula is 2,000 times 1.08 to the power of T. And ladies and gentlemen, using my list and spreadsheet, I had a time. And in this situation, I had my final amount. You remember, because A stands for final amount. This is what's going to be there. I put in the time. Uh, what did it say? After three years, I did a few more years, just wanted to see how it looked. But generally speaking, we did just one, two, and three. But the important part here is my formula. Where did that come from? So that says equals 2,000 times 1.08 with that little carrot and then time. Well, believe it or not, that's exactly the same as what I've got here. So I just put that into my calculator and poof, 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 it came out with all the values for me. Now, when I put that into a graph, if we compare this back with my simple interest, our simple interest was a straight line. This is doing that way. But what do we notice with our compound interest? It's actually, yep, 
a curve. And why is it a curve? Because we're getting interest on the interest on the interest on the interest and it gets higher and higher and higher and higher. And eventually you can actually earn some serious money. I think I said there used to be a, uh, a little investigation I used to do, how to be a millionaire by the time you retire. And it used to be that you just used to put, if you could find a decent rate of interest, you put something like $3,000 a year away for 10 years and just leave it. Don't touch it and you'll be a millionaire by the time you retire because the interest starts to get really, really high towards the end. And obviously, as I say there, if we compare them here, it's probably hard to see because we've got so many data items, but there is a very definite curve whereas this one here is linear. So remember, simple interest, straight line. Compound interest, curve. And there we go, pretty much at the end of this video. Thank you very much, guys. Really, really good to see you. There is a couple more minutes left, and hopefully you will listen. But if not, I'll see you again soon. Take care. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye. -bye. Stay safe.